G'day folks and uh, welcome to Gourmet Shed. Now, uh, what's that? A match you say? No, that's scenery. So I shouldn't burn it because I can make it look like this. Yes, the, uh, the other day I used matches to uh, make the posts for this wire fence and uh, some electrical wire which was uh, stripped and I used the individual thin bits of wire to uh, put in the fencing here. So I'll show you the simple method for, for doing this and uh, it's, it's not that hard and a lot of you have probably done it already but uh, it looks kind of rustic and uh, uneven and that's what I like about it. Now I'm talking two types of matches here, two brands of matches if you like. Uh, this one on, on the right is the very well-known uh, brand here in Australia, the, the brand you automatically think of when you uh, think of matches. And it's got a nice soft white wood, um, which is, um, I'd say, a bit more pliable than this budget brand on the left. Uh, the wood in this match is quite brittle. And uh, so when you come to drill it, uh, it's quite easy to split that one. I mean, they will both split if you if you go too hard with them, but uh, the budget brand is more prone to it. So possibly uh, just go for the the better quality, well-known, softer wood brand, and I think that'll stand you in good stead. For the wire, I just got um, uh, when when I throw appli appliances away, I cut the leads off them, and uh, this, this one's got a plug on it and everything. And um, I just cut off the uh, the brown bit there, and I stripped the uh, insulation off it, and um, I finished up with these uh, strands of wire. So that's that's the wire I'm using, and uh, to uh, drill the holes in the matches, uh, I'm using a pin vise, and that's a 0.75 of a millimeter drill bit. Uh, and uh, you know if you've got a packet of uh, mini drills you can get these things on the internet extremely cheap that's my set there I think that came in from Hong Kong for about three or four bucks you know so uh, and it, there's a good range of sizes in there so a, uh, a pin vise and um, a miniature drill bit will stand you in good stead for that for the drilling and a sharp knife and then later on we're going to use some paint um, but these are the basic tools and of course a block of polystyrene uh, and while we're on that uh, subject the polystyrene yes I've also got um, a toothpick here or cocktail stick uh, which is very handy I've got some measurements on there from when I made this other fence and uh, I just put some pencil marks on there for depth and all that sort of thing but also when you're working on on the polystyrene you can just simply go like that and make a hole and then you can stick a match in there and uh, you can you can stand the matches up to paint them uh, to work on them to see how they're going to look all that sort of thing so the polystyrene is a very handy thing to have not just for this but uh, you know if you're making trees or anything else that uh, needs to be stood up while it dries or whatever for a while it's a very handy thing to have just an offcut of uh, polystyrene now the first thing we've got to do is uh, make our posts all the same length I work on 30 mils for mine, so I just lay it on my cutting mat, and uh, the uh, the grid pattern is 10 mil squares, so I just cut off 10 mil. You know, you don't have to be extremely accurate, but just cut it off with a knife. There we are. So that's the start of the fence post. Now the next thing, the the posts I'm I've been doing, they have a um, a bevel on on two sides of the post, so I, I just take the blade and take a snip and turn it around and do the other side bang just like that simple now you need to determine the side that you're going to um, have your holes drilled on uh, and uh, I've already worked that out with my system and I do my first hole at the bottom of the triangle formed by the um, like the snipping off the, the top there at an angle and it just lightly very lightly drill through don't try and force the drill too much it'll just bite its way through as you rotate 
make a nice neat little hole there and uh, it'll very quickly find its way through this very very soft wood and you'll probably find that I'm through now and um, no, not quite but um, you can just keep it going and it's through now I usually turn it around and go back through the other way now you can do this a couple of times just to make sure you've got a nice clean hole uh, you don't want any sort of bits hanging in there bits of wood uh, because you've got to feed a, a narrow little wire through this but also once you paint this thing once you paint it it's probably going to cover the hole up so you're probably going to have to ream the holes out again once you paint it so but that's that's a good start now uh, on my on my fence I've set my holes at four millimeters apart so the wires are a foot apart I think that you know seems all right uh, there's no there's no strict measurement here so we just carry on and uh, drill some more holes so there we go that's what we finish up with um, a post with three holes in it and you might think well they're not exactly even the way they're spread across the post doesn't really matter it's supposed to be rustic and when you look at this thing on the model on your layout nobody's gonna know now the next stage is, is painting this thing so um, we'll get it set up on the polystyrene here I'll just make a hole for it because this is a pointy stick it's much easier than to use that than trying to push the, uh, the match into the polystyrene with the blunt end like it's got there so we'll just sit that in there and push it down I'll, I'll go way below the bottom hole which is about where my fingernail is there uh, and I'll paint well below that so that uh, we don't have any white wood showing once uh, the thing is set into into the scenery. Uh, now, just as a side, <laughs> just as a side note, when you when you're painting, uh, we keep these um, biscuit containers. Uh, when we buy biscuits and things, we don't throw these out. We use them for for paints or modelling in some description. So I cut off one of these containers, and uh, in this case. I, um, I used some uh, burnt umber the other day. I've got actually two shades of burnt umber, believe it or not. And uh, I put them in this tray and used a bit of both on, on the post. But um, if you uh, have some left over, you can't get it back in the tube. And uh, why waste it and throw it away? If you put it in one of these uh, snap lock uh, sandwich bags and seal it up, it stops it going um, drying out. So that's just a little tip for your paints. Uh, my wife actually keeps them in the fridge because they last even longer that way. So, But if you've got it all sealed up, it's all safe. Uh, yeah, whack it in the fridge or whatever. And uh, it saves wasting a bit of paint. And uh, sometimes you mix up a colour and it's a one-off. And uh, I did that the other day. I've got this one. Uh, if I can grab it. I've got this one here, which was... Uh, I don't know whether you can see the colour there, but I, I painted uh, some... Um, capping for my stone wall with this color and I don't really want to lose it I've got to cut some more timber to um, to paint up so that's still uh, fresh there it's waiting to be used so yeah and that's uh, at least two days now possibly three so yeah just a little tip there all right now don't be too precious about painting this thing just slap it on and uh, make sure you, you get it down to the uh, the base there where the polystyrene is get it on all sides it's a very quick process, just brush it on and uh, away we go. And as I say, this will probably fill up the holes that we drilled a bit. Um, but we can ream them out when the paint's dry, when we're ready to plant the thing in the, uh, in the scenery and um, start putting wire through it. So that's it for that one. So we have to let that dry. And uh, when it's dry, we'll come back and uh, do a little bit more to it and then it'll be ready to uh, to be used in scenery. Now while we're waiting for the paint to dry I should point out that my uh, scenery here is a polystyrene base and uh, this is polystyrene I could just push that blade into that if I wanted to so um, it's quite easy for me to plant my fence posts in the scenery 
uh, I just make a hole with a cocktail stick and then put some PVA in there and then push the post down to the required depth. So if you have plaster or something quite harder than um, good old polystyrene, you're going to have to drill your um, your post holes. That's just something I thought I should mention as well, which is blooming obvious, but there you go. Right, the paint's dry and you can see it's got that sort of uh, grainy look in the timber and the top's a bit rough, it's a bit spiky there. Um, and the holes will probably need reaming out again when we're finished. But there's one more stage to go through. I mean, this looks like pretty much a new post as though Farmer Brown's come along and just whacked a new post in, but uh, we want a bit more rustic looking than that. We want a bit more uh, weathering on that. So what we'll do is get some um, uh, chalk pastel and uh, we'll, we'll go to town on this little post and muck it up a bit. Okay, I've just got some uh, common or garden grey chalk pastel and uh, what I do then is just um, take the uh, the post and we rub chalk pastel all over the little sucker like this. Make sure you get the top as well. Give it a good go and you know you're probably thinking now I've almost lost the plot he's just stuffed this post well stay with me stay with me and you'll see what happens what we do is rub it on well into it and what this is doing is getting into the grain and uh, what we're going to do now is take a fair bit of it off with good old fingers just drag it off with your fingers and some residue is left behind in the grain and uh, it has that it gives it that sort of weathered look like that now to to seal that all you have to do is whack it back into the uh, polystyrene here and give it a spray with cheap hairspray and that'll seal it for you that's all you need to do with that and uh, when we um, add the wire in, we can go over with a bit of black texture here and there as well, which sort of you know helps to um, add a bit more uh, color depth to the thing as well. Uh, because the wire is copper, and uh, we need to we need to color the wire, otherwise it looks ridiculous. Uh, I usually use a silver pen, but we'll go into that in a minute. So, yeah, that's how it comes up. Pretty good, eh? Yeah, I'll just rub a bit more off there. But yeah, it gives it that sort of uh, distressed look, I suppose. We could call that the weathered look. Now I've gone back through with the uh, the drill and uh, reamed out the holes because you know you get paint in there and you can see, see how they're a bit rough on the edges. I mean, you can you can rub that off if you want. Um, it's up to you. Um, yeah, it looks a bit distressed. I might rub that off actually, and uh, and then we're ready to uh, whack some wire through. But yeah, you've got to clean your holes out before you do anything. Now folks, this is going to test you out, and it's going to test me out too, because I'm doing this from a distance. I'm behind the camera trying to get this little bit of wire through this blooming hole. And oh boy, here we go. Yeah, I've got it. And uh, just pull it through a bit. Now, I'm not going to take you through doing a whole fence here, because we haven't got all day, have we? Um, but what we do, is this being the first post, uh, what I like to do is pull the wire through until I've got a, you know, you know, maybe a couple of inches left at, at the end. Now, what we do is take the wire around and we have to feed it through that same hole again. So this is why it's important to have a uh, good size hole in relation to the wire because we need to get it through uh, twice. And here we go. And it's fiddly work. Now I've pulled it through. And you just got to watch you don't get any serious kinks or loops in it when you do it. And just pull it tight. Right. Now this being the end, whoops, stuck on the wire here. Right, this being the end wire, we just um, wrap it around a couple of times 
to um, get a good grip on the post. And of course this post would have been, if it's in the scenery, it would have been glued in by now and it would be more solid than this one is. But you can wrap that around a couple of times and trim it off. I've just got some uh, little snips here. Can't reach it. And then just tidy the end up, push it against the post. Now, to all intents and purposes, that should hold pretty well because you're not doing anything with it. Um, and when it goes to the next post, I'll just wrap it around this cocktail stick that I've got here so we can simulate the wire fence. I want to show you something else here too. Now, obviously, when you're doing this, you would start with the bottom, the bottom rung uh, down here. Start with the lowest wire first and work your way up. If you start from the top and work your way down, it'll drive you crazy. So, okay, so we'll assume that you've got your fence finished. Uh, you've got it strung with wire. Now, uh, something I'm using to colour the wire up, because we don't really have uh, copper wire fences, do we? Is um, I've got a um, silver ink or paint pen. Um, it's got a reasonable size tip on it. It's used for probably card making, that sort of thing. Um, and. Uh, I just um, run over the wire with that, colour it up so it looks silver. Now you could you could add some rust colour if you wanted to, some black, uh, just a bit here and there. Be careful if you've already got your grass down because it's very easy to um, touch the tips of the grass and you finish up with silver tip grass. So yeah. You might pay to um, think about that carefully before you do it. So that's got a bit of uh, bit of silver on there, and I've got a little black texture here somewhere. Yeah, I'll just use a uh, fine black texture on some of the uh, copper parts here and there, just to touch it up, even on the post itself. And uh, I don't think the lighting is very good there for you, but um, yeah, that, that's the method. That's basically the method. Now it requires a steady hand and some patience, but uh, this is the sort of results you can get. Now for the uh, fussy folks out there, it might not be exactly to scale. I really haven't done the calculations to be honest with you. But um, I think a bit of artistic license has to creep into this as well. I mean, if it looks good, it probably is good. So I'll go with that. So there you are, folks. It's as simple as that. Uh, I'm sure we could all have a crack at that. So uh, get out there and start building fences, okay? And I'll, I'll see you next week. Cheers. Cormo.